Hi folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So have you ever wondered what is the thread context? We've all heard of process injection and set thread context for setting up the new thread that you injected, but what is that? What does that actually mean? Well, stick around and we will explain it. But before we do, just a quick shill for our Patreon. The clip that you're about to see comes from one of the tutorials we released on Patreon. It's a seven part series on building a debugger from scratch. We build it in Python and give you all the details on what's happening under the hood while you're building it. So if you're interested and that kind of stuff, I encourage you to go check it out. Hope to see you there. Without further ado, let's get on with it. Now let's pull back for a minute and talk about how threads actually work from a higher level picture and what's actually going on in your computer when a process is starting threads. So here we have a very simplistic high level overview of a process. There are multiple threads running in the process and I want to just show you guys how this actually works under the hood. So obviously the CPU only has so many cores and it can only run so many threads at a time. And it basically takes all threads from all different processes and gives them time on each CPU core to run. Now this is a very deep topic and we don't really want to go in depth here because we're not too interested in how that works. What we're more interested in is what is the effect of that on the process. More importantly, when you're debugging a process, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that for each thread in a process, the thread is going to need to keep track of its state in the CPU, because of course it's not always running, so it can't rely on the CPU to keep that state for it. When it's scheduled, the CPU is running, and then once it's told, hey, you gotta wait and let another thread execute on the CPU, it needs to take a snapshot of the CPU to save its state, and then once it's ready to run again, it can restore the state on the CPU and start running again. This state is referred to as the context. Now, for those of you who have done a lot of malware analysis, you might have heard this term context when looking at threat injection, remote threat injection, that sort of stuff. What the context really is, is a snapshot of all of the registers in the CPU for that thread. And of course, in a process, you have multiple threads, so there are multiple contexts. Each context is tied to a thread. Now, when a target process is halted for a debug event to be sent to your debugger, all of the contexts are also snapshotted in time. This means that your debugger can both read and modify those contexts for each thread as it sees fit and this will modify the behavior of each thread in the debugger. Now here in this diagram, I've just given you a simple set of registers. There are of course many, many more registers than just what we've shown here. And we're only looking at this from a 32-bit perspective. So for the basics here, let's talk about just these few registers I have up on the screen. One of the things you might wanna do as a debugger is change the execution point of a thread. To do this, you can actually modify EIP in the context. So this means that anytime you receive a debug event, or if you force a debug break on a target process, you can modify EIP in any thread and thus modify where the thread is executing. The next time that thread is scheduled on the CPU, it doesn't know any different. It's just gonna use the context that you gave it. So this is an incredibly powerful technique that you can use to basically manipulate the target in any way you want. Now let's talk a little bit about how you change the context. So there's two Windows API calls, one get thread context and one set thread context, very straightforward. So what you would do is you'd say get thread context for a specific thread, you would receive the context, then you could look at it, display it to the user or modify it, and then use set thread context to save your changes back to the thread, then tell the kernel to continue executing. I hope you enjoyed that. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's more of that on our Patreon. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, go check it out. Hopefully we see you there. And remember, keep exposing the canvas behind the malware. Stay curious, guys.